right, welcome to another episode of Song Title Challenge. The question is, climbers, how would you write this one? So being challenged, Brent and I were challenged at one point to write a song on a podcast, which just doesn't translate in any way, shape, or form. But we like the idea of the challenge. Mm -hmm. So we thought, you know what? We'll have climbers, like listeners of this podcast, like you, send in their song titles to info at daredevilproduction.com. Production is singular. There is no S. Info at daredevilproduction.com. Put song title challenge or STC in the subject line so it gets into the right folder. If you don't, it won't. And what I do is go through and spring a song title on Brent and a guest that we have on the podcast kind of live while we're recording it. So they haven't heard this before, had any time to prepare. <clears throat> and then we try to cook up five or six different conceptual angles for how you would write the lyric. How, you know, which way could you go? Sometimes the low hanging fruit, the first thing that comes to your mind is the best way to go. But I would venture to say the vast majority of times it's not. It's, it's, um, it really is like five or six concepts deep where you're like, there it is. That's the way you're going to write it. That is the coolest thing I've ever heard. That's going to be awesome. And, uh, and then, you know what, they're turning into songs. We're having climbers that are writing them. We're having people demo them. Uh, one of them's going to become a cut at some point. I can guarantee uh -huh. you that. And super good. Um, you want to add, oh, it's not a co-write in any way, shape or form. It is uh, just a fun, creative exercise. So, um, th this kind of creative exercise is, it's super important for bringing new life to your old hooks in your hook book. Um, Brent went through after doing these for a while and decided to start practicing what he preaches Yep, and, and said, you know what, I'm going to go back to day one and pick like 20 titles and pick one out of there. And at, you got what over 4,000 hooks. Yeah. Yeah. Unwritten. And there you go. And, and then, you know what, like going through this, it kind of revives the energy and that hook. You're like, oh yeah. We'll get, and then you've actually taken some of those ideas and, and gotten some songs written like that, that, have, yeah. and, and got a, some cuts. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. So, I have stuff out currently that was in the uh the old song title list unwritten for a couple of decades. You nice. know, or at least a decade or several years and starting to see some activity on those, which is really fun to know that okay, they're not dead just because they're five, six years old. So that's right. So anything you want to add to that, Brent, before you introduce our guest today? Uh this is gonna be fun. So this is live theater. I and our guests have not seen seen this title. So First time you hear it is the first time we hear it. And so we'll just see what happens. Well, there we go, Brent. Why don't you introduce our guest and then we'll get going. Sure. Our guest today is a buddy of mine. First met him when a mutual friend, Lisa Schaefer, uh, brought me in on an idea that he and her had started or had talked about and brought me in on it. And uh, I'm very thankful for that, especially every quarter. Well, it doesn't show up that much, but, you know, I still see it. Uh, but we got that song cut by Joe Nichols, a song called Crickets. So I was batting a thousand with this guy and our batting average has gone uh, straight down from there. But it was good while it lasted. <laughs> and uh, he is he's he's legit. Yo, he is in the Country Radio Broadcasters Hall of Fame as a DJ. So his voice has graced the airwaves for quite a while and in, in, uh, in markets. And so he's also a songwriter successful. He's we mentioned the Joe Nichols cut has a song on the Grammy winning uh, album by Hillary Scott, the gospel album also has the current uh, bluegrass single by Del McCurry. Who's just a legend in the bluegrass world. If you know bluegrass, you know, Del and Del is cool and a bunch of other cuts as well. We're on a Ray Stevens record together, not as co-writers, but on the same record. Uh, and so that's when I started seeing his name around a bunch. And so he writes comedy, he writes country, he writes bluegrass, he'll write gospel. He'll just write the pants off anything. So this is my buddy. Welcome Bill White. Hey, bud. Yeah. Thanks, hey, uh, Bill, welcome to the show. Yeah, thanks for having me. And the lesson there and all of that, Brent, is you had a choice to keep writing with Lisa or me, and you chose me, <laughs> and it's gone straight downhill ever since. <laughs> yeah, so. Well, it's, it's funny. For the next time, Bill and I didn't write again for oh, quite a while, and our buddy Nathan Woodard, I think, was our first like co-write after cricket. So it just, yeah. we just hadn't gotten back in the room, and, and so you know, I gave... I gave Nathan a hard time. I said, you know, if this song doesn't get cut, we know what the problem is because Bill and I always get cuts together. <laughs> We've never not one hundred percent of the time. <laughs> and so yeah. Nathan, if this doesn't happen, we know yeah. where the problem. It's always is. it's always fun to make the Christian writer feel guilty. They start praying right away. <laughs> right away, that's great. So. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> all right, Jen. So, are you ready for all our right. song? Not at all. Yeah, man. Never this. 
All right. All right. This is from John Holman. John is our songwriter. And uh, my hot take on this is I have no earthly clue where we're going to go with this because um, like I'm trying to figure out how to make this true. I, I guess I don't believe it's true, but the, the <laughs> title is People Come Cheap. People uh, Come Cheap. Oh, People Come Cheap, man. Okay, there's a there's a there's a statement. John, I mean, it's wow. a statement that would make me want to hear what the song is. So I feel like the title's provocative. Yeah. I want to know what the he- heck it is they're talking about. But I'm like, whew, there's no there's no low hanging fruit that hit me in the head. Like, yeah, uh, Newton style. No, you know, Bill, did you make Johnny mad at some point for picking this title? This <laughs> That's a, yeah, I'm just thinking this won't be easy. Yeah, so it's like. <laughs> It's almost like you want an add-on for a title like that. People come cheap, but they don't come easy, you know, or something. Yeah. You know, to to back in tag. Which it we a which bit. we are entitled to do, sir. We can yes. take all that creative life. We can put anything in the front of it. We can put anything in the back of it. Um. Uh, so feel free. Oh, and uh, one final thing, Bill, is that um, you're not bound. Let's say by any kind of genre on this exercise. Okay. Yeah. So if it, if it, if it could be rock and roll or um, oh man, that's good to know because you know, yeah. elect- electronic rap is my. That's my <laughs> well, game good. Right. I was gonna say so, you got a you got a single coming out, yeah, right? Like so you and Dead yeah. Mouse, like yeah, got together. Doesn't make a bit of sense, but it's dirty, you know. So it's just, <laughs> it just has a lot of cuss words in a row, and, and I, I'm one of nine writers on it. It's the same cuss word. That's yeah. exactly. Uh, right. It's only one word in the whole song, but there's nine writers on it. And yep. uh, uh, that super, reminds uh, me of this. Uh, this. I had a political cartoon I saw in the newspaper, cut it out like back when we got the newspaper back in Batesville years ago. It was like when two live crew is, you know, a thing. And it was just these two dudes sitting there and like, Hey, we're from the rap group, uh, way too crude or something. And this is how we create lyrics for our albums. And one guy just hits the other guy in the hand with a hammer. And then it's all the, you know, all the blanked out. And they put a mic up to him. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, man, we uh, what did we? I wrote a song once with a couple of guys called "I Rap Caucasianally," you know, which is more of a, 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 a which is more of a redneck approach to rapping, you know. So. <laughs> That's hysterical. <laughs> oh, That's well, hysterical. People come cheap, my yeah. Goodness. We are procrastinating. Um, wow, that is a that's a tough one now. It, it almost sounds cheap, but yeah, yeah. I like um, I like how Bill added the tag on, but they don't you know come easy or something. I, almost, I think of the um. Oh, what's his name? Um, oh my gosh! Um, for from the Eagles, the drummer. Oh my gosh! Why John I, Henley. The, thank you. Why am I blanking on his name? But anyway, that song he's called "The Garden of Allah," where he mm-hmm. is basically the devil, right? He's taking on the point of view of the devil. And, I don't know that song. The Garden of Allah. I know the Garden of Eden, right? Yeah, did that. the Garden yeah. of Allah. I believe it was on his actual Miles Greatest Hits uh, record that I have. Oh, had okay. forever. It's huh. really, really cool, really kind of creepy and stuff. But uh, it's a little bit of like a sympathy for the devil. I mean, totally different vibe, different song. But he's speaking from the point of view of the devil. And so you could, you know, take a reach there and go, you know what? We're going to sing from the point of view of the devil. Or I bet the devil's thinking people come cheap. I get them for almost nothing. No, that's right? good. Ooh, people that's out good. For, you know, they come to me cheap, right? Because um, I'll just get them for... I just get them for a million bucks, man. They'll sell their oh, soul wait, oh, for money. Wait. They'll sell their soul for love, for envy, greed, all this stuff. Yes, Johnny. I was just thinking, like, you could do a, you know, how Billy Joel has the "We Didn't Start the Fire." Yeah. What if you could run down, or at least you could make the story about, or r- rattle off a bunch of names? I'm thinking Robert Johnson comes to mind, mm-hmm. who, um, you know, is is. Led the legend says he sold his soul yeah. to the devil for the good talent uh, to play mm-hmm. guitar, and then you could make some political statements. You could make some um, mm-hmm. some social statements. Yeah, you know, um, you know, people come cheap. Let me just tell you how. <laughs> yeah, oh, and, and and how about that? Like, how about going for the sympathy for the devil thing? I think of um, what was the movie with um, with um. <clears throat> Oh my gosh! Um, I'm not the only one having brain farts today. Great. Yeah. <laughs> no, Keanu Reeves. Oh, the uh, Devil's Advocate. 
devil's advocate right where, where he's actually My like a, sin, you know yeah yeah where yeah where he's like a he's like a he's like in the you know the best gig that the devil would have which would be a, a lawyer, lawyer a <laughs> super high-end lawyer and he's in everybody's crap you know yeah um that could be interesting yeah it could be a little bit of like yeah sympathy for the devil uh, meets um yeah these you know, people and you know i got this guy to you know some mass murder or just i got him just for a thrill just because he got yeah. off on it and i got this guy politician because he just prayed power that the fat lot of good that's going to do him after he dies people come yeah. to <laughs> yeah you could yeah. uh you could uplift the thought of, uh, of people too and you know it might be one of those list things in a verse you know where you can't okay you can't afford the big home you can't afford the fancy car but uh -huh. you know but but people come cheap and that's more important anyway in your life your yeah. friends and the people that you make in your life that you keep close to you, you know, or what makes a difference anyway. They, you know, you can make friends cheap. Doesn't cost a dime. Yeah. You know, oh, well, part. there you go. Adding on so. to that. What if you're talking about like everything that's expensive, right? Like yep. this, this lawyer's expensive and this is expensive and the doctor's expensive, but you mm -hmm. know what? The right kind of people come cheap or that's maybe right. good people yeah. come cheap. Something when that, and then you're talking about that friendship thing. That would be very interesting. But keep in mind, you know, you can order all those other things. Same thing applies there. If you order a people like right now, it'll take a year to arrive. You know, so, <laughs> so just keep that in mind. Back it's a order. waiting period. Yeah. And that's so, not yeah. counting. That's not counting the shipping back up. The, no, that we the have supply today. chain for people is broken down too, you know, for so. Sure. <laughs> There's the back up in the fallopian too. They just, I don't know if that ever cleared out. Uh, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> So uh, the, the, pe the people shelves are empty right now, but come back after the snow leaves, you know, there'll be more. Months. Yeah. And, so. um, <laughs> yeah. Inflation, but people come cheap. Um, yeah. And I wonder if there's a way, cause it is that, that word cheap, you know, cause I almost want to say like friends, friends come cheap, but, or, but they ain't free or they don't, come, you know, they come free, but they ain't cheap kind of thing of there is a, to be a good friend is not, May, maybe not monetarily expensive, but it's it costs you to be a good friend. You yeah. know, costs you yeah. time, time, well, costs interest, your time. compassion. Yeah. You know, all this stuff. And, you know, the, those other kind of investments. I'm not sure how to swing that with the word cheap people because people is such a <clears throat> broad term, right? Um, I, for some reason, it makes me think of the beginning of that that Marvel movie, uh, Black Widow, with Scarlett Johansson. At the beginning, there's, I mean, it's really jarring. It's about, uh, you know, human trafficking, which is still a real deal in the world. And so it's all these girls. Of course, it's Marvel. So they're going into the Black Widow program to get trained to be, you know, assassins or whatever. But they're saying, you know, this guy said, yeah, we use the one resource the world has way too much of girls. You know, uh. and, you know, for human trafficking and stuff. It's that's brutal. But it almost makes me wonder, like, or some people think people come cheap. You know, is there a way to to say that? Like people have so much value. You know, each of us intrinsically is so valuable. Um, but you'd think people come cheap. Maybe if you look well, at the world, you'd think, boy, people come cheap. Almost like a protest song or a. Um, is there a know, way that you can? You know how they say. Kind of thing. You know how they say like a. a, a, a a person is smart, but a crowd is stupid. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? Like maybe like, yeah. like people come cheap, but a human is, is that something you yeah. coined Johnny? Something? <laughs> no, but I, I, I want to, I want the t-shirt Bill. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I like what you said to me. It's like thinking beyond, I mean, people is that people. Yeah. You know, it's almost like you need to take it to the value of what people really are in your life. And the people yeah. that you love long-term become, long lasting, never ending friends. If you culture it, if you spend your time, mm -hmm. if you nurture it, if you send email replies, if you, if you work that, that then, you know, they don't have to be replaced. Like some of the things you buy too. You yeah. Know, sooner or later, you're going to replace a roof on your home and you're going to replace your card. You're going to, but with a people investment, that's forever. Yeah. You know? And, um, Oh, they, so maybe they come, maybe people come cheap, but friends take time, right? That's, oh, that's cool. Oh, maybe yeah. just people come in and out of your lives. Yeah. 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 So if you are saying, yeah, people come cheap. I mean, I, you know, I see all these people everywhere and they come in and out of your life that you just, that are strangers. 
Yeah, like, like a new relationship is can essentially be cheap, right? It can be just happenstance. It could happen mm-hmm. out of nowhere. But then I think, Bill, on the note of what you were saying, it was just like, but if you take the time to cultivate that and you take the, first of all, to recognize that this other person is worth mm-hmm. the time, you know? Yeah. Um, and, you know, people come cheap and friends take time and they're worth Yeah, that's, it, I like that. Know? I mean, friends take a little more effort. Yeah, people yeah. are a dime a dozen. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's people everywhere, you know, and people who need people come cheap, yeah. you know? So, yeah. So that's, <laughs> that's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, uh, like a friend with weed is a friend indeed. I think. Yeah. <laughs> I know. <laughs> you know, we're just, let's start a new group, uh, you know, up, up with cheap people. You know, we haven't had that group in a while. You know, we can do that. So, <laughs> <laughs> That is not the easiest title. I, no. I think you call 12 apostles. I could have gone all day. <laughs> yeah, but you got sure. People come cheap. You know? um, I think this is, I like where this is going though. I mean, I think it's very, I, you know what? We need another sympathy for the devil song. I think yeah. to, to make that statement, you know, who killed the Kennedys? And it turns out it was you and me, you know? <laughs> yeah. I mean, like those kind of statements where you can really just sort of drive that home. And, and as long as you're, you, you know, you don't have to, you don't even have to mention any names, you just mention situations or something yeah. and, and how, um, it, it, and how easy it, yeah. It, I mean, it could be a song about a turning to the devil or staying away yeah. from the devil. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. like <clears throat> staying on the straight and narrow, um, yeah. be, you know, people come cheap, but you're worth more. Maybe yeah. something like that. What about if it's a commercial jingle for like a, and an eye doctor where people's come cheap. That's his whole hook. You know? Pupils. So oh, he's pupils. The pupils. 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 <laughs> pupils come cheap. Yeah. So. so. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Uh, oh, I have, I have a, I have, I have a, this beautiful, this amazing comedic friend. I don't know if you, either of you guys have ever listened to his stuff. Haywood Banks, who's, who's yeah. ridiculously, stupidly creative. He's a regular on the Bob and Tom show all the time, but, we used to do stand-up comedy and comedy clubs together, and I'd open a lot of shows for him and watch him. But he had one of his what was one of his lines was uh, 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 doctor. He was an eye care doctor named Doctor Like, you know, like like eye care. Go to go, you know. So <laughs> <laughs> Doctor Like, like yes. eye care, like eye care. <laughs> yes. <Yeah, so. laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So Mercy. This is better than one back in baseball. We had Dr. Slaughter. Oh no. Yeah, that's Ooh. an unfortunate name for Boy, that. There's person. somewhere there's somewhere you want to go. Exactly. That's it's a, either that. I mean, he would probably been more at home at the Conagra chicken plant, you know, on the kill for it. Yeah. It sounds but, like a like a moniker for a for, for a serial killer. I know, or a bad. Do they wrestler. call him Dr. Slaughter. Yeah. <laughs> He's the one they call Dr. Slaughter. Um, <laughs> all right, so people come cheap. Uh, is there a way to okay? So I like the idea of like the sympathy for the devil, which feels like a probably more of a rock song. You know, I don't see that being, uh, I mean, I wonder if you could do that as a, as a country thing, maybe like an Eric church kind of thing, which is a lot of rock yeah. in there. Um, I think he's could. done stuff like that. Um, you know, you, I don't see that going Southern gospel, <laughs> you know, but, um, what, what else can we do with that? Uh, you know, can it be some dumb anthem thing? Like, is there a thing about like cheap beer? You know, people go for the, you know, like the two for ones kind of thing. Um, and people, okay. Is there some sort of story thing where, um, it's like this, I don't know, man, I almost see like a sign where some of the words fell off the sign and all this left is people come cheap, <laughs> you know, like, Oh, that's funny. I don't know what yeah. that is. You know, a few letters, you know, or words fall off this old dilapidated sign in this rundown, you know, place. And what's left is people come cheap. Um, I don't know what that would be. That'd be building up a whole story around that, you know? <laughs> yeah. Well, you maybe, got three and a half minutes. I mean, yeah. you, I've had, a, I've had a lot of, uh, as you know, Brent, I've had, gosh, I think five cuts by Cletus T. Judd and he's a, all he does is parody songs for the most part. He cut, we, we cut some original comedy songs with him, but also had a couple of parody songs with him. Yeah. But I mean, here's a stretch for you. I mean, if people are cheap, 
you know, you could almost parody that John Michael Montgomery song, the Grundy County auction where you can't sell them, you know, it's uh-huh. a, and the, and the auctioneer is going off, you know, give me, give me an eight, give me a nine, give me a, you know, yeah. and nobody's bidding, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and then, Hey, check me out here. Then crickets. Well, what, what, what about the adjective for people? What about blank people come cheap? Yeah. And then blank. flawed, flawed yeah. people. Yeah. Desperate. Just, yeah. Desperate people. Uh, um, unkind people, you know, yeah. come cheap. um, hooker. Uh, yeah. Let's see. Hookers are not making more money than I am, apparently. But, yeah. uh, so. Well, if it was that, okay, so we've had the angry ex girlfriend. Thank you, Carrie mm-hmm. Underwood, right? Yeah. Um, why can't we have the angry ex boyfriend? <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? But like, hookers come cheap. Like, somehow making the statement that it's cheaper to get a hooker than it is. To, <laughs> you know, than, than it is be a, it's a business doing pleasure with you kind of right. thing, you know? Yeah, like, <laughs> we, are, we are going down a bad road here. Exactly. <laughs> I'm having to edit my brain right Guard now. Guard I, know, I know exactly. Guardrail. Yeah. Guardrail. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No. So, <laughs> I just don't think you want to write. I just uh, maybe it's just me, but I just don't think you want to set yourself up to put hookers and cum in the same. <laughs> I, just don't, I just don't think I don't you want, think to, do you want to do that. So I just don't think, even if, I it's think cheap, right. even if it's cheap for people to do that, I still don't it's, think you want to go there. No, I don't think you do. Not in not any of the genres I work in. Yeah. Uh, that's a campfire so, song. What if what if so. what if you what if it's like you said desperate people come cheap? What if it's like one of the story songs, like advice mm-hmm. from uh, a parent or a stranger or something? Well, I think you know, you're like going to it there now. It's, it's at a bar, people that are no good that really are not your friends. Those kind of people are cheap. Yeah, you know, but yeah. Real people, really good people, Ooh. are not. What if know? it's what if it's a, what if it's a um like a biopic type of thing on being a star. Yeah. I was thinking that too, that kind of rock thing of, you know, the hair band kind of thing of, you know, uh, when you get all the, the girls you want or whatever, you kind of find out people come cheap, you know, yeah. uh, Lambos are expensive and, you know, but you know, like every, every artist has those sycophants and those, yeah. you know, hangers on beggars and hangers on yeah. type stuff. Um, so that could be, you know, it could be, <clears throat> um, You'd have to be careful how to do that, though. You don't want to demean your audience, I guess. Yeah, you know? and, yeah, you don't want yeah. to do that. I think the for me the most meat on the bone is you got you really got to back in that to make that title work. You yeah. know, I, I love the thought of people come cheap, but but good friends aren't. Yeah. You know, uh, uh, the the people you want in your life are not cheap. Yeah, all these other folks, mm-hmm. these folks that'll tell you you're great while you're going up the chart. Those yeah. people, they're pretty darn cheap. But when yeah. you're coming down, you know. If they come, if people come cheap, people go easy, you know, Ooh. that kind of thing. Ooh, you know, if like, people come yeah. cheap, um, I like that. Now, like, we're, now we're, now we're getting somewhere. Yeah. The, the ones that aren't really invested in you, you didn't really, yeah, you haven't put that in, relationship investment in, right. They're not real friends. Like you're talking about bill. Like, yeah. yeah. So you're going up the chart, they come easy and they go quick and, then, hey, and they go, they go and, and they go easy and they yeah. go easy. Exactly. So, yeah. Uh, so a little bit of the easy come, easy go thing. Uh, yeah, yeah. So that, you know, it's, it's like, yeah, if there's one thing I've learned, you know, people come cheap when the, you know, when you got all the money, you know, and they go easy when it's gone, you know. Yeah. Um, you know, cheap when you, yeah, people come cheap when you're on top and they sure go quick when you're, you know, when it's, when you're off the top kind of thing, you know, when you're, when you come back down. Um. Oh, I was Who's also it? thinking like no good people come cheap. No oh, good people that, come cheap. Oh, no, that's cool. No yeah, good no, people come no, cheap, right? Yeah. Oh, there I don't you know go. how you yeah. play with that, but well, that's got a nice double thought to it that way. No does, good, yeah. you know, but no good. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah, who sent the idea? And I'd like to personally thank them for this great idea. Who was it? <laughs> John, John Holman. Like Holman. Meet, uh, <laughs> Bill behind the woodshed. Yeah. <laughs> over, over by the seesaw on the playground. He's like got a couple Man, words that he's, he's like, high. 
come yeah, out with you. Yeah. Had a nice morning ride, expecting a relaxing <laughs> afternoon, and wham, running into it this. Came crapped all over it. Yeah. <laughs> no, here, here's, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, well, it's better, John, than like you know, if a, a big artist comes in, and go, we got to write this title. <laughs> like, oh yeah. no! Well, if a big artist comes in, the answer is yes, we the do. The answer is always yes. And we're yes, going to we do. Yeah. yeah, and I'll it's a the great idea. Path afterwards. Yeah. So, <laughs> okay. So, what about changing like, um, come like people go, mm. you know, friends go, blah, people come cheap or yeah, um, and. Yeah, I think that to me that's it. Either either way, to me that's that's the essence of it. People come cheap, but but man, the people that last in your life they don't. You know, they don't. You gotta yeah. you gotta spend some time, and it's worth the time that you give. What you give is worth the extra time or extra money that you give is worth it. You know, to mm-hmm. have those people in your life. Yeah, I want to cheat and say you like put a no at the beginning. No people come cheap. <laughs> you know. Which, you know, which is a jacked up title. Um, yeah. So mainly if John walked in the room with this, we try to talk him out of it. <laughs> yeah. Actually, you know, I, what else you it, got? No, I think this is where Brent goes to that 3000, you know, hook book of his and goes, maybe this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm not sure how we're going to get a thousand people singing this in a concert. People come cheap. Yeah. yeah. It's like, I know. I yeah. Know. People, people suck. come cheap. Uh, unless it is that sympathy for the devil thing, which I think would be pretty cool. Um, you know, especially from the idea of like a, a politician, you know, like votes. I'm just well, who else would think that people care. come cheap? Um, so, you know what? OK, so so maybe not sympathy for the devil. But th- so you just hit on something else. It could be from the perspective of a politician. It could be just a slam on American politics. Yeah. People you know? come cheap and you're spending other people's money. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, pe- and people, you know, people come cheap if you get them scared. Uh-huh. People come cheap if you, um, you know, uh, if, get them if you angry, get them angry, divide them, yeah, come. that kind of a thing. Like, yeah. who else would think that people came cheap? What kind of a person would think that? A politician and the devil are right. I don't know. You could tell the <laughs> difference between the two if you yeah. met them. Um, yeah, that's really the thought. Who who actually thinks that people come cheap? Yeah, you know? I mean, yeah. What a great statement! That go. Oh, I I think we got some good looks at it, fellas. I mean, yeah, it's. it's- if, if we were digging today. trenches the whole freaking time, not for nothing. <laughs> yeah. It was just it was just a, a, a boulevard of nothing but red lights, man. But we, <laughs> made, it, we made it to the other side. You know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um all right, so Brent, if uh John Holman wants to write this with you, <laughs> uh, contact Bill White. <laughs> at, uh... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think it just, uh, I would just tell him it just needs a bridge. Finish it up yourself. <laughs> you're right there. <laughs> you're, you're so close, John. You're yeah, right you're there. so close. You don't need me. Right you there. Don't need me. You're right there. <laughs> I'd feel guilty so. taking a piece of this, honestly. Uh, <laughs> that That's a challenge. I mean, that that truly is, you know, and anything, you know how this works too, guys, where... Uh, I'm sorry, what, what's the, is his name the synonym? What's his name again? Uh, John Holman. John. So John, I mean, to me, we sit in writing rooms all the time and uh, ideas like that routinely come up. And I'm not I'm not saying it's a bad idea. I'm just saying that a writer will bring in an idea like that, mm-hmm. thinking maybe there's something there. And then you do sort of kind of hear crickets in the room. Yeah. You know, and you move on to something else. But walk into another writer's room with two other people mm-hmm. and they might see the whole thing going, oh, and yeah. think of things that we, the three of us, have not even thought of today yeah. that would elevate even more. That happens all the time. Oh, for so. sure. Yeah, yeah, and sometimes it has to do with genre because you know, talking about doing my personal song title challenge. I mean, some of those songs sat around for years because for years I was a country hammer. Everything looked like a country nail. But now that I've been broadening more and write like more bluegrass or more southern gospel or CCM or whatever, you, I look at it through different lenses more naturally now. I go, oh, that's why I never wrote that because that's. That's a Southern gospel thing. I didn't think in those terms. That's why I never wrote that as a country song. Couldn't make it work because it's not a country song. Not for me. Mm-hmm. This title, it goes over in this other lane. And so sometimes that happens as well. You know, yeah. and the other thing that does happen occasionally too is, uh, you know, sometimes a writer will bring in an idea that they're really married to or that they they really love and they think mm-hmm. that, 
I, I'll, I'll take it into Brent and think Brent might be the right person that day. And maybe nothing, nothing happens. You don't yeah. you come off the idea. And sometimes a writer will hold on to that idea, aside it, put it aside. Don't give up on it. Put it there. Mm-hmm. Might take it to another writer. Still might not work, but you yeah. just don't give up on it. And someday, and sometimes, you know, if the person is a, is a complete, you know, it's a writer and they play piano, they play guitar or whatever. One day the whole thing might fall out by itself as a solo ride uh-huh. and it still gets cut, you know, yeah. if they bring it home, you know? So if yeah. you really believe in your idea, you know, man, I'm, I'm a big one for don't give up on it. It's like lines and songs. Sometimes you'd be co-writing and, you know, and I've done this and I know you've done this Brent where I'll mm-hmm. go, I'll suggest a line and you get crickets from the other writers and you just, and I'll fight for it two or three times mm-hmm. and still get crickets and I just give up. But I'll put that over in a side note somewhere to pull yeah. it out somewhere else, you know, that it can be, that That's can true. be used. You know? Oh, for sure. So. Yeah. I, I really do like the the whole idea coming from a political, like you're the, mm-hmm. you just get to rip on politics by coming from the perspective of a politician. Oh, you yeah. Know, which is a very sort of Don Henley thing to do, right? Like right. you said, Gardner Allah, and he's done that in a few other, <laughs> yeah. Um, on a few other tracks. Dirty and, laundry uh, and all she yeah. can do is dance. I'm very political kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Get the widow on the set. We need dirty. He's coming from the, yeah. the, the perspective of a, of a TV news yeah, that's you know, good. Yeah. network, yeah. you know? Yeah. So I, I think that could be a really compelling song. And mm-hmm. and you're who's not going to want to listen to that when you see that title? You're like, wait, what? Yeah, the title's What the hell is this sure. about? You know what I mean? Yeah. And then it's so funny how that works sometimes. So what I like about this the most is that a lot of times in, in, the, in my email box for this particular um you know, part of the show that we do, Bill, I'll just have like all kinds of titles where people are just, just trying to be clever with the title. You know what I mean? And a lot of like, I'd rather have a bottle in front of me than a frontal lobotomy kind of. Yeah, yeah. All that kind of crap. Yeah. Or, uh, or if Adele married a farmer, would there be a farmer in Adele? Those kind of songs. Exactly. You know, they, yeah. They kind of write themselves. You know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It writes so. itself. Yeah. Right. To the toilet. Um, <laughs> but then when we have one, that's like, like, I, well, we always talk about, like, you know, the dance. If you just saw that in a hook book and you're like, wah, wah, it's that's, no that's the yeah. most boring title you could possibly imagine until you do something like this and you come up with the angle that they did. And, mm-hmm. and now it's it's gone from the most boring title you could possibly have into uh, the most one of the most iconic songs ever written, you know. Yeah. Yeah, and that's um, where you have to think about that. I mean, the dance, they're probably, you could probably bring, like you said, bring that up as a title and we might look at each other again and go, like, where do you go with that? But yeah. if you think about it as a songwriter, what's what's the old axiom? It's not, you know, <laughs> not, for the most part, you're not writing quote unquote the dance. You know, I want to know about the two people who are, da- who are dancing together, what's going yeah. on in their lives. You know, yeah. that's the interesting part of, of that kind of thing. It's like, we've talked about that before, Brent. It's one of the more brilliant things some, somebody wrote about uh, Bobby McGee that Chris Christopherson wrote that's so colorful all the way through it. Uh-huh. His, his theory on that was uh, don't tell me, don't tell me about, don't tell me about the truck. Don't tell me about the truck. Tell me about what's going on inside the truck. Yeah. You know? And and that's where the, that's where the song really starts to pop, you know? Yeah. Heck yeah. yeah. Fair enough. All right, guys. Well, that brings us to the end of another song title challenge. Please send in your titles, as many as you want. Um, and I can't state this enough because this continues to happen. Um, people will send me in a big listicle of titles, and then they'll add another one to it, and they'll cut and paste the listicle with the new one. And the new ones are going to get lost, guys, because I don't know, I, you know, I can't do inventory on five emails with 25 of the same titles plus a new one. So just send in the new one, you know, and, and you can send in as many as you want. There's no limit. Send in one list. It's great. It's all good, but don't send me like the same titles. Otherwise it gets, I get a false sense of, uh, I, I feel rich with titles and we're not, we, we, have, <laughs> we got 25 emails, the same stuff, <laughs> exactly the same stuff. So send them to info at daredevilproduction.com, put song title challenge on it. And who knows, you might have yourself a hit songwriter or two talking about it. Hey, I, on just wanna, show. I, I just want to tell Johnny that uh, if nothing else, I do feel like I've just lived his title because I've just done 35 minutes and I didn't make a dime. So, <laughs> so, <you know. laughs> 
So that, that's the joke. You're living it, pal. Exactly. Yeah, so I'm, I'm living the song. You know, <laughs> it's like the it's like the people that put up the social media posts with like the triangle play button, but it's a picture, oh, and people yeah. keep pressing it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, we'll see you in a couple of weeks on this one. This podcast exists because we want you to win. So keep on climbing, and we'll see you at the top.